Hi, so I want to do a review of just how these um, renderings are going to work when you're taking them from uh, Revit into Enscape. Uh, I caught this with a lot of you the other day with our reviews on Monday, but I really it's not everybody um, understood or caught where you have to actually turn on the lights. Um, this option is going to be in your 3D view. So by now, I think most of you do have your view set up, which is great. If you don't, make sure you're getting them set up like this week in terms of um, what Anthony and I want to see on your poster and what you're going to hand into me for your renderings. Also, best practices, if you have done of these views with numbers, click on them, see what they are, and rename them. You're really just going to hit off, you know, right click and rename. If you double click, you're right there or if you just double click on it, it'll work. So a lot of these I've set up already from previous projects. So for this guy here, um, one of the things I wanna point out to you is you go over to view. So it's the top middle here and you go to the little teapot render. So the first step here within Revit is to make sure your lights are turned on. You can also play with a couple things here, the settings, um, if you wanna make it medium to high or whatever. Right now, medium's working okay. The main thing you wanna watch for right here is where it says lighting and scheme. The default for a lot of you will say um, exterior sun only. You wanna have interior sun and artificial. That means you'll be getting sunlight from the outside. So you'll get some nice natural shadows. You'll also have your lights turning on inside. Some of you, depending on how much light is coming in the room, you might actually want to have just artificial only because this glass wall here is gonna bleed in a ton of sunshine and it's gonna really affect how things are um, shaded in, in your room. Because again, in reality, if you're standing in a room and there's a whole wall of glass coming in, the right side of the room is gonna be much darker visually. That's just how sunlight works. <laughs> um, you can also here, if you click on this artificial light, that's a button to turn lights actually on individually and off. So sometimes if, you, if you're not seeing it turn on, click this on, make sure it's clicked. It's gonna be a huge long list of lights. You can also adjust the exposure here. So you can make it a little bit brighter. So in this room, for example, I know that again, I'm competing with a lot of um, exterior sunlight coming in. So I might wanna make my overall exposure a little bit brighter. So slide it to the left. So you can play with that a little bit, the settings. Um, you can do a draft render right now. You can click render and see what it looks like. Um, but for most of you, you're gonna be bringing it into Enscape. Older videos of mine talk about putting in background images here. Since most of you are rendering in Enscape, we're not gonna talk about that now, but that's a way to have a custom view out the, the window here. But since we're doing an Enscape, I'm gonna show you how that works. So we're gonna go over to Enscape. Um, a lot of you have these, um, you don't have as many buttons on the top as I do, and I'm not sure if it's just because I have a, a more, I don't know, professional version on my laptop from Sage, but um, my head, I think, is covering it, but to the far right, there's a button called Visual Settings. This button comes up for you once you've ran your rendering, and there's the buttons on the right side. There's a bunch of commands. So when I helped a couple of you yesterday, um, those commands came up once you started the rendering. So when I open it up, you're gonna see on your end, you're gonna have the same tabs. Um, where the background Im information is being held is here under Atmosphere. So it's the Atmosphere tab. And then there's horizon um, and it's looking for a source. It's looking for what's the world outside of your model. You know, the way Enscape works is it uses um, panoramic views um, or these kind of ones that look like crosses. And this is called skyboxing, meaning they pretend this exists in the real world and they wrap the image all around it 360 degrees. That can get really tricky to try to make one yourself custom. So they already have some preloaded ones. Um, this town one for some of my views is working just fine. I'll show you how it works in this one. I'll show you when it doesn't work and what we're gonna do instead. So that one's all set. So I'm gonna click pause, start it up again, resume it live. And I'll pause while it's still kind of coming up because we've got an old one stuck up there. All right. All right, so this is what the Enscape model looks like now. That's the default town setting in the background. Um, Funny thing that throws my brain off just a little bit is that green out the window is actually green grass. Um, but from this view, it might be the Chicago River. <laughs> so it's kind of like I could sell this one in a presentation. But that's the stuff to watch for because unfortunately, like I said, when we built our model, 
we're trying to save you the hassle of building, you know, five to 20 story building. Um, so this, this works okay. Um, some of the other ones, obviously you wouldn't have like a field or, you know, some beautiful piece of nature, but let me kind of show you sort of the, the downside of how this works. So let me bring up the next view I have and I've got to sort of set up my share here. So we're doing the screen. All right, there we go. All right. So in my executive office here, um, before I go to render it again, I want to make sure on each view that I go over to view and go to render. My lights are turned on. They're now sun and artificial. Again, I want, I'm, this might be one where I might turn off again, the sun, cause there's so much coming in there. Um, but so far so good. Then over in Enscape, if I go ahead and I now like render this one, you're going to see what the kind of background does. We'll kind of close this guy up and we'll bring it up in a second when it's ready. All right, so here's that same town view. And again, it's this big giant picture that kind of wraps around my model. The problem is this office, uh, Enscape thinks it's sitting on the ground. So there's basically this kind of like neutral, almost like pavement ground area, and then some grass and then a fence, which is not what would be the view out of like my executive office on like the 10th floor in Chicago. So the best way to handle these honestly is to fix it in Photoshop. So. Um, let me kind of show you where we're going to do that. So we're going to do new share here, over here. All right. So if we go back to Revit, um, in this case, um, here's my, you know, the same setup. Again, um, I'm going way to the far right and I'm picking a visual settings. You have it on a different button once you open up Enscape. Over here in atmosphere, I can just kind of default all that out and kick click white background, meaning there's going to be nothing out that window. Um, again, there's other options in here too, if you're poking around to, to deal with like how many clouds and if you wanted to have just generic, you would have wind. Um, but there's lots of things where you can play with this in terms of the color and the rendering too. So you can tweak this before it goes into Photoshop. But this would be assuming that like everything on the inside, I just want the outdoor window to be completely blank. So let me update that one for you so you can see what that one looks like. And we do the share here. And this is what it now looks like. So it is pretty bright. I might want to tone down the brightness, but it's it's not too bad. It looks like a nice bright office. So this means when I save this image, um, I can take it into um, Photoshop pretty easily and very easily mask in a pretty decent view of the Chicago skyline. I'll also remind you too that I have some of those uploaded to the Google Docs. There's literally a folder of Chicago skyline pictures that will get you roughly at the height of a skyscraper. So, all right, so that's kind of a really brief sort of setting this stuff up. Um, we are certainly going to help you in the next week and a half get all these figured out, but pay attention to that aspect too. Don't forget that, again, for a lot of you, the view out the window is you know, how you're gonna sell this to a prospective client because again, they're paying a lot of money for that view out that window too. All right, hope this helps.